Henry Montes on gift has mulliganed to five. So we'll keep that in mind here. Now, if he can get God Pharaoh's gift into play, may not matter. Yep. The goal is to make four land drops, have something that puts the God Pharaoh's gift into your graveyard, and refurbish that back. No secret on what he's playing. Turn one Minister of Inquiries from Henry Montes. At best, disguising a second color. That could be. We have a one player playing blue green, blue green gift here on day two. Mm -hmm. The other two gift players are on blue white. Turn one memorial for John Rossum. And Henry wasting no time activating this minister, and actually, I believe this is probably because of the scry roll. He did mulligan to five. He was on the okay. play, and I believe he must have known that the top card was God Pharaoh's gift. So that's kind of cool. Why would he keep it there if it was God Pharaoh's gift? Because he had a minister. Okay. Not many people are going to kill your turn one minister. And That's against John Rossum, it's pretty fair bet he's on blue white control. Search for his Cantas from both players. Well, it took and no Henry time. And Henry will transform his. You know, I like Search for his Canta in my control decks. I don't get to flip it like that with minister. And Henry going to immediately oh, turn three, wow. just refurbish a God Pharaoh's gift? Jeez, he mulled a five, but he had the best possible start here. This would explain why he kept the God Pharaoh's gift on top. It's going to go ahead and bring Champion of Wits into play. He draws four discards, too. Yeah, you can cast out all you want. You need four lands to, to make cast out. Right. Yeah, best Rossum could potentially do on the following turn is cast one of these two blink of an eyes, try to buy some time, but now he's under pressure. That 4-4 champion on the battlefield, the <laughs> minister starts to attack. And this is the power of the blue-white gift deck. Sometimes you just explode from the gates like this. I mean, and you have to ask John Rossum, did he have a main deck syncopate or negate in his hand here? Uh, that would have been his only defense against this. Right. And at this point, it's it's basically too late. Unless he, he could have one Forsake the Worldly main. Uh, and sometimes that you see that in the lists, and I don't think it's here. Yeah, that, that's so not available. Another refurbish from Montes. I, yeah, there that is should get disallowed. That, uh, you can't just let this stuff keep happening. No, no, you'll disallow this. So you disallow this. You let him, God fears, gift something else. Oh, man. John could, if he gets enough settle the wreckages in a row he might just be able to actually grind through this but i ooh, i mean it's not a great plan yeah and henry's already in position where he can play around settle he's putting jonathan down to three i believe okay so you just hit these to attack with one creature on following turns you, you can even send in two you're, you're gifting something back john says go what a deck this is some impressive stuff here. On a mull to five from Henry Montes. And another <laughs> refurbish. And if John has to leave up Settle the Wreckage, yeah, he can't even counter that, and he'll pick up the cards. Henry Montes, mull to five, no problem. A convincing game one win. Yeah, that was really impressive stuff. So I did say I like blue-white in this matchup, the control deck. Um, I mean, that's that can happen. <laughs> yeah. That <laughs> was definitely some best possibles. Ooh. But, uh, yeah. That was scary stuff. All right, let's take a look at uh, some sideboards. We'll go to John Rossum's side. Uh, as, as strange as in standard, blue-white control is actually a deck that generally gets worse after sideboarding. Um, strange for a control deck, but that's how standard shapes up. His sideboard is three Lyra Dawnbringers, two Negates. He has one in the main, two Sorcerer Spyglass. He has the two Torrential Gear Hulks in the board, two Walking Ballista, an Aether Meltdown, a Jace's Defeat, a Forsake the Worldly, and... Glimmer of Genius. He doesn't have any of the four mana draw spells in the main. He's opted for the two pull from tomorrow build. Yep. Yeah, so this is a matchup where you really want to go heavy on counter spells. You want to have yeah. negate basically at every juncture. So these extra two negates, those are going to be excellent. And I actually like reaching for the two torrential gear hulk. That represents more copies of counter spells as the game goes along. Jace's Defeat, not so much. Doesn't counter Refurbish. There are blue spells in the opponent's deck, but they're mostly not the kind of thing you're trying to counter. You can expect negates from the Gift Deck sideboard, so you might reach for Defeat just for that reason, to counter their counter spell. And if we're sitting on counter spells, Glimmer of Genius is pretty good in the matchup. Yeah, I'm interested. I, I like the negates. I agree with that here. Torrential Gearhulk's an interesting one. Um, a lot of times, you board them in against people who are going to try to singular threat you. So someone who's going to say, play Lost Legacy or Sorceress Spyglass 
or you just board them in and when you have like enough, so there's some matchups like a control mirror where you have so many dead cards that, hey, Gear Hulk does something. I don't know if this is any of those matchups. It can't, like, I'll be interested to see how John goes for this. I could see it both ways. There's a good chunk of main stuff, main deck stuff that you definitely want to get lighter on. It's not yeah. a great fumigate or settle matchup. Yeah, settle, I'm, I'm, I guess that you're, that's fighting the post God Pharaoh's gift games. Right. And you want to make sure you can answer Angel of Invention, but outside of that, you just need to keep the gift off the table. Yeah, at that point, you may just want Essence Scatter, something like that, Seal Away. Right. Yeah, your Sync of Baits do some pretty heavy lifting in the sideboard games. As They're really disallow. good. Now, on Henry's side, he does have those three sideboard negates. You have to think those will be coming in. Yeah. And two Authority of the Consuls, two Angel of Sanctions, two Settle of the Wreckage, a Jace's Defeat, a Lyra Dawnbreaker, a Sorcerer's Spyglass, a Thopter Arrest, a Seal Away, and his own copy of Teferi Hero Dominaria. Oh, if he Teferi. decides okay. to be the beatdown in the post cyborg games, you could reach for that. I think mostly we're looking at these three in the gates. I actually don't mind Teferi in a matchup like this, where you just want to yeah. assemble a critical mass of things that matter to the control deck. That's just a spell that's good on its own. Yeah, I'm interested. It seems like he has a transformation sideboard where he becomes a blue-white control, a light version of it, right. where he goes into two settles, a Lyra, a Seal Away, and a Teferi. Uh, I don't want all of it. Teferi's fine. Henry's Teferi's are going to be a lot worse than Rossum's Teferi's. Right, they do make sense, but the, the big hits here are the three negates and the Jace's defeat. Yeah, I wouldn't mind Sorceress Spyglass. Uh, it answers Teferi. Light Control is a, mo is a deck that's just about Teferi. Sure. Yeah, that one is fine. Um, Angel of Sanctions as opposed to Angel of Invention. In this matchup, Sanctions might be the better Angel. Just it has an Embalm ability. Sure, you have a free to put it in the graveyard. It's not really permanence that you're trying to exile with it is the thing. Yeah, it would be cast outs. Um, right. Yeah. So, depending on what's under a cast out is good. Um, if that even works, you know, they disallow it a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. it, it can You can fight uh, a fight if your God Pharaoh's Gift ends up under a cast out, then the Angel of Sanctions can do some heavy lifting. It's also nice to have some cards with power, you know, against right. the deck that's trying to negate you out of the game. Right, there is that... There's this interesting thing where you are a combo deck, but you're based on creatures. So there's pressure on John Rossum to have negates, but also still to have essence scatters. You know, even a card like Walking Ballista or Champion of Wits, Jonathan can't completely ignore them. Right. There's no way available to Rossum to just fight over the graveyard, which is going to be common for a blue-white deck, but against these inter eternalized threats against God Pharaoh's Gift, you do kind of wish you had that sort of thing. It's not a ton of stuff that's available in Standard, though, and this is a pretty fringe matchup. You have two copies of the blue-white deck in Day 2 and one blue-green. Montez taking a mulligan here. Now, if you missed some of the action and want to catch up on the SVG Tour, be sure to check out our YouTube page. We do have full recaps of our entire events there. Those come up midweek. You can see previous opens on the coverage. We also have our split second and versus series, a lot of great content there. So check us out. Easy to subscribe, youtube.com, Star City Games. We had a great match with Mike Sigrist earlier in the tournament. We, made five, we saw five hollow ones. Playing against Luke Feeney. If you missed that one, you'll want to check that one out on the YouTube page when that gets posted. And Henry keeping on six. There we go for second game. Nothing as crazy this time from Henry Montez. Yeah, no turn one minister, so it's going to take some time to set up. And John's side, completely happy just to trade lands for this, as they're doing. Champion of Wits first play from Montez. John will say that's fine. Discarding Angel of Invention and God Pharaoh's Gift. You hope to seal away the champion in this kind of matchup. Yeah. Yeah, preventing that from being eternalized is a big deal. I think about seal away is it doesn't work. It's not, an in a t it's not like condemn where it takes place in combat. You can leave up your disallow and then if nothing happens then end step seal it away. Right. Another champion to play from Henry. You see, John actually does have Essence Scatter in, in his hand, but he's just choosing not to use it to, to, on the first one. Maybe not even on the second. 
It looks like that one will earn his essence scatter. Says go. Do we have seal away? We all we do. All right, so Rossum has kept things relatively even so far. So the kind of best thing going is that champion in Henry's graveyard. Angel of Sanctions from Montez. Ooh. John, you are right. He does have a Torrential Gear Hulk, for, by the way, in his hand. He's got to pay respect to this Angelo. If it resolves, it's going to take care of the seal away as well. Yeah, and if it doesn't resolve, though, it just comes back. Henry just needs one more land to eternalize it. Or embalm, rather. Yeah. Six lands say go. So John can Torrential Gear Hulk disallow an embalm. I think so. Henry will go for that play, and that's Rossum will disallow it off the five six. Yeah. Now Rossum, assuming that he has a little bit of interaction in the rest of the hand, this is a four turn clock with the Gear Hulk. Yeah, you'd love to just finish this up with something like Teferi, but Gear Hulk may be enough. And Henry's going to rebuild. Here's strategic planning. Top three cards: one in hand, two in the graveyard. He'll take the land. It goes over a Minister of Inquiries and a second strategic planning. Angel of Invention. And I don't think there's any more creature control from John Rossum. I know he has at least one more land in hand, I believe a Field of Ruin. Yeah, if, if this is how the post war games play out, I do hope that John has kept in most of his Settle the Wreckages. I can see Fumigate not being great here. But, you know, getting these cards permanently gone seems fine, especially with so much Embalm. Yeah, but uh, what Rossum really needs is any kind of spell. You see he plays a Plains Return. There is that Field of Ruin, and I think just one other card in hand. Meanwhile, Henry eternalizing this Champion of Wits. Draw four, discard two, coming up for Henry. Remember, these creatures, there's lifelink going on here, too. John is not going to win this race as it stands. Ooh, and this is a draw five because oh, it of is. the angel. Checks on the total power of the champion. And John's just getting out mid-ranged here by the blue-white gift deck. Yeah. Yeah, Champion of Wits is quite good at doing that. Yeah, it's why when you saw that essence scatter on Champion earlier, I was kind of thinking, yeah, it's a bit of a cringing play to do because you're, you're going to pay for it. Right. I believe the spell in Rossum's hand is a Forsake the Worldly. It is. He's drawn to Fairy this turn, however. All right, that is a fine pickup. It's fine. Now, Henry, after I draw five, has now has a Teferi of his own. He has <laughs> a lot of cards, no, yeah. to be honest. Things still pretty much going Henry's way. Yeah. You don't need too many draw fives against Blue White to make that true. <laughs> I don't think there's many matchups where you need a lot of draw fives. <laughs> some, some, <laughs> not, no argument there. And search for Ascanto to go with Teferi for John Rossum. So see what Henry has back. He has now a f large grip of cards. We'll start with a Teferi. Does, is John has one card left. Is it a disallow? Does it matter? Would Henry negate anyway? Teferi will tuck away John's Teferi. That all... That all sucker punch, yeah, as that's, I call it. That's that right hook. Just right back, back to the deck. Boom. I hit you so hard, you're not, you're not going to come back for three turns. Yeah, I'm going to punch you right in the next week. <laughs> the, uh, if Planeswalkers had a flavor text, I, I believe that would be Teferi's. Over in the Jeskai control mirror, Ben Nikolic takes game one over Michael McKenna. It's a bit of a head scratcher here for John Rossum. He's just behind on all elements right now. Gad that search for his Kanta, but he's actually a ways off of transforming it. Yeah, just a couple cards in the graveyard. Mostly just been playing lands. He hasn't drawn extra cards in this game. Henry sure has, though. That's true. John's going to cycle Forsake the Worldly. 
John's teammates helping him out over on the legacy table. Luke Purcell wins game one. John will attempt to make another Teferi. That gets hit by Negate. Says go. And, and Henry now in firm control. I believe he has God Pharaoh's gift with Negate back up this turn. Plenty of good stuff in the graveyard. That he should be able to snowball this pretty quickly. Right. It's not even clear that he needs a negate backup. Rossum just extremely light on resources. Yeah, I guess he's one mana short of negate backup. But that's fine. He'll just go for Godfrey's gift anyway. And John extends the hand. He's not going to be able to come back from that. So 2-0, Henry Montez, the winner here with blue-white gift. Yeah, it was actually a really cool strategy employed there by Henry. In game one, he just ran over Rossum. He had a very good combo draw. And in the second game... He drew some extra cards. He cast some timely negates, and he really just outcarded Rossum and just had an advantage without really even employing the combo elements of the deck. No, game two, he just played mid range. He just started tapping out for rares, and eventually John didn't answer one, and then it, then he lost. Yeah, tapping out for rares is a tried and true strategy. I well, I mean, right? We had champion, champion, angel, embalm angel, angel, to fairy. These are all rares. Just every turn, I will make a rare or a mythic rare. And eventually, you will run out of ways to counter them. Yep. And then they will do good things because they're rares, and they rares do powerful things. Yeah, reminiscent. There was uh, when, when Mythic Rares first rolled around. The there was a deck in Standard that was literally just called Mythic. Bant Mythic. It had played a lot of Mythic Rares. Yes. I did like in that deck that the top of the curve was this dollar common, though. It was Sovereigns of Lost Alara. Dollar rare. But That's a rare. Yeah. Not common. Dollar, you know, it's like a bulk rare. Right. But everything else was just yeah, tutor up Eldrazi Conscription, which was also quite cheap at the time. Yeah. That's actually a casual hit. That card is worth money now. Okay. It's a big colorless card. A lot of those are. Yeah. It's a big aura to put on your Earl the Might Stalker. Oh, the Mist Stalker. That's great. <laughs> Hexproof's great. What a fan. I'm such a fan. Let's go over to our legacy table. We have Luke Purcell and Nick Costello. So on Miracles... Purcell won game one over Sneak and Show. I'm going to see if he can do it again. So both Purcell and Nicklich up a game. Both will need to win their matches, though, as Rossum is, has lost in standard. Yep. Yeah, the ceiling is four games. They cannot lose two in either set. The position is still fine here. To Jeskai Control Mirror, you know, it is a mirror. You have to imagine Nikolic has more, more experience than the mirror, but it can still go either way. Miracles is actually pretty strong against Sneak and Show, though. You have a lot of good disruptive elements. You're good at dealing in any, with any element of the combo. So I, I, I got to figure that um, the Jeskai Control Mirror match against Jeskai Control Matcher. Master Ben Nikolic is probably their best spot here. Yeah. So when we look at the Miracles deck, deck here from Purcell, they've been joking at him a bunch this weekend as Purcell apparently has not won very many matches with Miracles and Legacy. <laughs> I hear pretty mixed reviews about Miracle right now. Uh, there's some players that think it's the best deck in the format. I personally think it's easily one of the best decks. And there are some players that think it's wildly unplayable. I mean, they banned Divining Top. How could it still be good? Right. You yeah. have to play Predict. They took away one of the broken cards. How many <laughs> could there be left over? As far as our Jeskai Mirror, imagine there's not too much in the way of differences between the two decks. Both players playing some Teferi Hero Dominarias. Looks like Nikolic, Nikolic has a Jace the Mind Sculptor and McKenna does not. Sure. So we are right now here, though. Game two, we have Nick Costello on the play here at Sneak and Show. And Purcell. So both players have basic islands. Purcell starting on a ponder. A couple counterspell propers 
in the Miracles deck. Two copies. Okay. Only two counterbalance in the Miracles deck. And to be fair, Sneak and Show taxes spots on the mana curve that are a little harder to come by. Three and four tend to be more important. I remember even with Sensei's Divining Top, counterbalance wasn't great in this matchup. Now that Top's gone, I, I could see it being boarded out. Yeah, I would probably leave at least one of them in because a lot of the game is going to be brainstorming and pondering. So shutting that stuff off is quite good, but you certainly can't lean on it to deal with the actual combo. You see Costello, there was a defense grid in the holdings there. That, that makes the stuff that's not counterbalance a lot harder to execute. See some through the breach here for Nick Costello. Two copies out of the board. Putting one of them back here, though. Setting up for maybe defense grid into through the breach. So I want to see how many of those he'll keep, whether or not that breach is going to get redrawn or he'll crack the fetch. And with uh, no spells to be cast, it makes sense to just kind of hang out. And he chooses not to shuffle. He's redrawing. Ancient Tomb for Costello. The damage is pretty free here in this matchup. Yes. So we'll go to 18. We might see our first stab at defense grid. That will be the play. Good afternoon. Jace the Mind Sculptor also in hand here for Nick Costello. He has Force plus blue card if this starts a fight. And if this does not start a fight, then it becomes really easy for Costello to just go for a combo. Yeah, Luke will fight. Here's Force of Will pitching. Has to decide on it. Del uh, Search, Search for Escanta, yeah. One copy in the deck. All three players on their team registering Search for Escanta. Yep. The Search for Escanta beatdown squad. And rather than fight back with Force of Will, Nick allows Defense Grid to be countered. Possible the blue cards that he's pairing with it are of too much value. You see Jace the Mind Sculptor. That's actually the yeah. only blue card available. If you maintain that, then you just have kind of a fistful of hammers, and you just start throwing them one at a time. <laughs> yeah. And how many hammers can you catch on the face before you have a problem? I like this analogy. Yeah. I got a lot of them. I was thinking of that Koopa guy that just throws hammers at you. Yeah. He was there and he was like, how many hammers can you throw? And I was like, well, that guy never runs out of them. He exactly. just throws like hundreds of them. One of the more horrifying monsters in the Super Mario universe. A lot tougher than a Goomba. Yeah. I never try to kill that guy. I just try to get a running start and <laughs> jump past him. And then I'm right. like, because he's really good at throwing hammers, but he's really bad at turning around. I'm not, I may not be able to beat you in a fight, but I can probably <laughs> win a race. <laughs> but if I scroll you off the left side of the screen, you don't come back. Right. Fifth land from Costello. He has through the breach available when he chooses to go for it. Yeah, and he's set up so that he can wait until Purcell's end step, cast that through the breach. If that's no good, he can untap and have access to that sneak attack. And that would either allow him to hold back Force of Will Jace as backup, or even still, just plan to cast the Jace eventually. I like that with Through the Breach, there's always the possibility of just casting it on the end step to overload your opponent's mana. Now in Modern, that's a bit more of a thing. Now in Legacy, a lot of times your counter spells don't cost mana, so that's less relevant, but we may see him go for something like that anyway. Right. You see one of the cards in Purcell's hand that's Pyroblast. He'll need some blue counters to go with that. Sneak attack and through the breach, both red cards. So you think we're going to see something like end step breach, untap, sneak attack? I assume that's the current plan for Costello. And he has force backup for that kind of stuff. It's not bad. Force blue card, double combo. In particular, if he just draws some other blue card for turn and can maintain the Jace, then he just has a third haymaker to follow it up with. Yeah, that's excellent. And Monastery Mentor from Luke tapped down on mana as well. This should be the opening that Nick's looking for. Right. Nick giving this a think. I guess he could force a will that. I would advise against it. Yeah, that's. this game's about whether or not one of these two red spells resolves, I think. Yeah. Emrakul just cleans all of this up if this happens. And with two shots at it, with force a will backup, I like Costello's odds. Fetch once, fetch twice. Nick 
down to 15. Double red here, so to make sure he can activate sneak attack next turn. And here we'll go. And on the end step, through the breach, using Ancient Tomb. We at least one Force of Will in Luke's hand, but that is not going to be enough. Right. You need three of them, I think, to win this war. There's. Yeah, yeah. You would need three counter spells. Yeah. Uh, one of them, I guess, could be a Fluster Storm. Um, is that a value? There's one Spell Pierce in the main deck. Force of Will pitching Jace from Luke. And I think at this point, is there another line? Can Luke take a hit off Emrakul and then make enough monks to not lose the mentor? So currently he has six permanents. He's at 16 life. And the only untapped potential yeah. mana source is a fetch land. So he's short. So it doesn't quite work out. Draw another defense grid from Nick. We are past that point. Sneak attack. And here we go. Nick down to 12. Going to make sneak attack. Is Luke going to fight again? I don't know that he can. Brainstorm plus Pyroblast in hand. Yeah, I think you just have to fire off the Brainstorm. The odds of winning the game with that sneak attack on the battlefield, yeah, they're pretty low. Yeah, but even if you have the Brainstorm here, uh, Nick has Force Blue card in hand. Yeah. So I don't. He might. You might even just force. It doesn't matter. You can force the brainstorm if you cared to. Well, there's only only one card in Purcell's hand, so forcing the brainstorm should be good. Yeah, and that's what he'll do. And then the Emrakul is just lethal. Yep. Yeah, Luke at 15. No one card from zero Red. that'll do it. Emrakul. That's the life total. Game three. Nick Costello sneaks Emrakul in. 15 damage, and now. One game away from wrapping up the round. Yeah. There will be a deciding game three for that legacy portion there. Purcell had a couple disruptive elements. Uh, very unfortunate for him. He was never able to leverage that Pyro Blast. He kind of had something. If he elected to not cast the Monastery Mentor, that means that you can uh, open up Force of Will and then Pyro Blast over the Force of Will in a way that matters. But I don't know. I don't think it lined up. There was just too much stuff for Costello. Yeah, Costello picked a, picked a pretty good window to go two threats plus force. It's a lot to ask for Miracles to answer. And he wasn't able to. There's also just the fact if you don't cast that Mentor, when are you going to close the game? And actually, so we're seeing this a lot, whether it was through Bob Huang or Nick Costello, the Sneak and Show decks kind of both have extra combo pieces that they're boarding in out of the sideboard. Um. So we're seeing through the breaches as plus two. I, I don't assume, you know, we saw Arcane Artisan from Bob Huang. Um, I don't think we're seeing them even board anything out, right? They just go up to more like four sneaks, four shows, and then this sideboard card. Right. Yeah, certainly when we saw Bob play, he had show and tell sneak attack and the arcane creature in his hand just started jamming them and that, that was largely the recipe here assemble sneak attack and through the breach have a turn where you just cast a bunch of stuff and one of them is going to break through and both times when you've seen sneak and show play on camera i mean they have been performing very well thanks to those cards mm -hmm. Very important card in Purcell 75. There are two containment priests hanging out. Okay. Producing one of those will be a big deal. Yeah. You know, Sneak and Show being on the downturn when de in the Deathrite meta, I haven't seen that many containment priests, but back when Sneak and Show was really the top dog of the format, uh, containment priest was, was, ever, was a very important card in sideboards. And yep. Good on Luke Purcell of doing his homework and showing up with it today. Yeah, a card very much printed for matchups just like this. Well, the hard thing is from the Sneak and Show side, you can't... It's hard to see it coming if you're going to play the card sneak, Show and Tell. You both put the creature into play, and then they say, oh, well, I brought a Containment Priest in. Well, you, you'd respond by casting it. Okay. Yeah. It has Flash.
both players starting with basic island for sale just from the hand and fetch of a misty rainforest for costello this is not a matchup where basic lands matter a ton in fact, uh, Purcell does have Blood Moons in his sideboard. You see, he's pretty right. full up on basics. Though these are not Wasteland decks. Yeah, this isn't the kind of matchup where Blood Moon will do much for him. Bunch of red cards in the hand for Costello. Yeah, he has a Through the Breach. Top cards are Defense Grid. Brainstorm. Brainstorm, brain, brainstorm in a land. Hard to say no to that. If there's a brainstorm in your top three, you're usually yeah, in, he, in to keep it. If he has another fetch land in his hand, I'm generally not going to pass yeah. on a brainstorm. Yeah, and he does. Keeps on top. Search for Azcanta, turn two here. Possibility for Luke. And he'll go toward that. Safe enough window for it. And back to Nick Costello we will go. This gives him an opportunity to resolve Defense Grid as he picks up for the turn. It's brain, that Brainstorm. And that'll be the play. Nick takes the damage here. And that's enough to earn Force of Will from Luke. He will pitch Snapcaster Mage. Yep. The play is pretty much forced in a circumstance like this. If the Defense Grid resolves, then it's really hard to fight any counter wars down the line. Purcell hand, pretty land heavy. Is that all three lands currently? No, he has, yeah, Purcell's hand's land heavy. He has Containment Priest. Well, that's a great one yeah. spell to have. And Luke's hand is all the combo pieces. He has Sneak Attack, Show and Tell, and Through the Breach, all in his hand. Question is, does he have some kind of answer to this Containment Priest? And there's that Brainstorm. It's a reasonable place to start as any. Right, and I, there might. I'll check the sideboard here. For Nick Costello, he does have, I believe, a one of sideboard a braid in his hand. Okay. Right. Th that's a great and an important one to have. Well, it, it's. Right, he has to have. It's a lot of mana to make that play, though. I guess the best way to do it is with sneak attack. So you, if you cast show and tell. Luke has to work Containment Priest in response. If he brings in the Containment Priest using Show and Tell, it doesn't exile your creature. Right, yeah. So and he can do that. That means Nick would need five mana for Show and Telling it he, so that he could abrade the Priest and then the Show and Tell to be cast. The better way to do it, I think, is for him to cast Sneak Attack, then wait for an untap, and then start sneaking some stuff for single red. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you get a couple red mana online, you can activate the Sneak Attack. If Purcell responds with the Priest, then you just abrade that before your trigger resolves. Yeah. Well, can't you even just untap, and if he flashes in Containment Priest, you can, can say... Can activate it again? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sne nice. sneak, sneak Attack lines up a little bit better. So I guess you don't even need the Abradus if you have an uncontested Sneak Attack? Yeah. Yeah, so Purcell will need more than just the Priest to win this game. All right, and Search for Ascanta will try to dig him toward it. His hand, as you mentioned, just two lands and a Containment Priest at the moment. If Nick Costello with Sneak and Show wins this, this will end the round. Another force of will into the graveyard for Purcell. Didn't really want to keep it. He didn't have a blue card. That's going to inform Costello of a lot of what's going on with Purcell's hand. You think if Purcell had a blue card, there's no way he bins that force? Yes. That's just one of his most important cards. I have to say I agree. Here is Ponder from Costello. Remember, the, the thing is, I don't think Costello has a creature yet. So he shuffles off the ponder. He's got all sorts of ways to get the creature into play. Yeah, that is a problem. In general, though, getting a sneak attack online, just resolving that is a big, big. That's a big hurdle. Once you're past that, you have a lot of time to draw the creature. Ryan, is there any point at which in your Luke's side you want to start attacking with this containment priest, just putting it into play and chipping? Is that well, because his hand is so bad, he doesn't have anything to work with the priest, you probably have to be able to eat part of the combo with it. Okay. You need it to be a two for one, yeah. something like that. Uh, you want it to just counter a show and tell or a through the breach. <laughs> Here is show and tell from Nick. Luke will flash Contain Priest into play in response. Uh, this probably means that Nick will just 
All right. Show and tell happens. You could bring a land to show and tell. Or an omniscience. How about an omniscience? That is even better than sneak attack. All right. Well, Contain Priest doesn't do much here. Now, a lot of times to see the game end right then, Nick would cast an Emrakul. He doesn't have that yet. But he doesn't have to pay mana for any of his spells anymore. Pretty powerful effect. Yeah, it will not take him long to win the game using this omniscience. On the other hand, Luke has a Jace the Mind Sculptor here. He could just Fate Seal Nick off relevant cards for the rest of the game. Well, Nick didn't spend that Force of Will, and he now gets to cast oh. that without even pitching blue cards because of the Omniscious. Okay. So Purcell is going to need a lot more than just one thing. Priest will swing. Now Nick, of course, if he has that Abrade, can Abrade it. No. Don't know that he does. Two fetches for Luke. That will bring the number of cards in his graveyard pretty high. We're almost transforming that search for Ascanta. Yeah, getting close there. Got five cards in the yard. So. About to be six when this Jace the Mind Sculptor gets countered. Yep. Here's Jace. And yeah, Nick, I'll just cast Force of Will. Jace is... And Jace is countered. So Luke can trans... If he's willing to put that last card in the graveyard, he can transform Search for Escanta. Actually, has a fetch line as the last one, so he'll have it both ways. Mm -hmm. So there's some draws here. Costello definitely does not want to draw lands. But once you're drawing ponders or brainstorms with Omniscious oh, yeah. on the battlefield, just free casting those means that you generally have a lot of looks trying to find that creature. Ooh, defense grid. Sure. That's fine. I just put one of those into play. Oh. Well, cost actually, zero mana. Wait, wouldn't that make your spells cost real mana on your opponent's turn? I don't think it matters for any of his cards. Yeah. He'll just say go. He doesn't need to ever cast that through the breach. I don't, I don't think there's anything that makes that the case. And Search for Ascanta can transform here. And is is Luke going to win through an onboard omniscience? That would be be something. That'd be something. Yeah, Costello's at 10. He'll, he'll never need to activate the Ancient Tomb again because yeah. of the Omniscious, so it will take five hits. Yeah, however, that Ascanta could start to find counter spells for Luke. There's, there's a chance that Nick doesn't get here. Yeah. And Luke actually now deciding on the top card if he wants to transform Search. If he cracked his fetch land, it wouldn't have mattered. He'd have seven cards. But as it stands, he's already in the middle of that resolution. Mm -hmm. He has six in the graveyard. It does make sense to maintain the fetch land just because yep. it makes brainstorms better down the line. But it does create some tension if you just kind of want this card with Search. So he'll say go. Hits Nick down to eight. Draw here is another show and tell for Nick. Oh, the deck has some duds. I don't know. Says go. Top card. He'll bin a land and transform search for Ascanta. Ooh. Yeah, he drew counterspell. Yeah, I see why he didn't mill it. Yeah, and that means Nick has to draw two things. I, Ryan, I think he's going to beat this omniscience. Oh, wow. <laughs> a top of deck sequence that is Emrakul into Gristlebrand would do it here because you sure. still get the extra turn trigger. Well, Emrakul can't be countered. Oh, and just that. So just right. uh, just Emrakul on its own. Yeah, I guess he can just draw Emrakul. Right. That's a thing. <laughs> right. You forget that there's, like, more text on the card. In, in, in fact, if Purcell sees a cantrip for that reason, he should just fire off the counter spell. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's two brainstorms now in hand for Luke with that counter spell. He found one off search for Ascanta. I would not mess around with anything that takes me off counter spell here. Well, what I like about Nick is if he draws a relevant card, what he's going to do here is he'll start the turn by by jamming defense grid for free. Ah. And right. then that one's been in the hand. Yeah. Yeah, so actually by not playing it here, it's really kind of smart on Nick's side. Luke is going to miscount the amount of mana he believes himself to have. Right. He still does need to find that large yeah. creature. Yeah, if Nick never finds anything, then none of this matters. If he just, you know, draws a couple more spells, then shrugs and says, ah, it looks like I took six. Yep. Ooh, actually Pyroblast, a pretty you know, nice pickup for Purcell. He can just go for the Omniscience. 
Costello does still have a bunch of stuff that puts creatures into play in the hand. Well, it's actually interesting. You can beat an Emrakul here, Ryan. So if Nick casts Emrakul, gets another turn, attacks for 15, annihilates, Luke can take 15 and counter swing with two containment priests, and we're getting to that working. Well, slight correction, Luke at 16. Not thinking that's going to be the difference. Yeah, so Purcell's going to go for Pyroblast on that yeah, omniscience yeah. here. One mana answer to your million mana enchantment. And then on the, the next turn, Purcell will be untapping. He has that other Pyroblast. Um, I don't know if he just shuffled away the counterspell. That's unfortunate, actually, if that, that's, that's what's happened. But... Um, Potentially untapping with some good points of interaction and sneak attack the draw for Costello. No more of that, please. And I wonder, Costello never ran, while he had an omniscience in play, he never cast the sneak attack. And now if he actually wants to make sneak attack, he needs to use Ancient Tomb. At six life, that may not have been very free. Right. He will make defense grid as he passes the turn. Legacy and once again, he still hasn't found... Legacy. His hand is now sneak attack through the breach, show and tell, show and tell. So I, it's not... This may not matter. Nick down to four. That second contain priest in Luke's hand may just be the damage he's looking for. Yep. The draw here was Monastery Mentor. Looks like he's going to cast that one. Sure. Let's give him a think. He's going to read Defense Grid, actually. I think he has a question of, does this make my containment priest cost five? And uh, it's a spell. Yep. So it does. Luke, I like how he's managing life total. How he's at 16. <laughs> Here's Monastery Mentor. And he'll be able to mentor and still leave a Pyroblast on Costello's turn. Yeah, and now that the Omniscience is gone, that Containment Priest and the second one in Purcell's hand are likely too much for Costello to overcome. And Luke really had a sweat of it for about four turns. He was at the mercy of the top of Nick's deck. Mm -hmm. Pyroblast solved it, however. And Costello can get up to the requisite red mana to punch something through with the sneak attack. The issue is Purcell has enough life and enough permanence to crack back. And Costello starts with Brainstorm. Yeah. That gets pyro and, and that's it. Yeah, sneak, sneak, breach, sneak. <laughs> Another, okay. We're, uh... We're, we're still going. We still haven't, no. Deck did not cooperate. Yeah, and that, that's the danger of Sneak and Show. You have a lot of redundant effects, and drawing too many of them, it just amounts to hands, four-card hands that don't do anything. So it's going to come to the mo to modern Jeskai Mirror of Ben Nicholas and Michael McKenna. That clock is correct. They're in game number two, which really, Ryan, to me, feels like that, that Nicholas's team is playing with the draw in hand here. Um, if Nicholas can win game two, or if game two never finishes, their team will win. If McKenna wins game two, I don't think we're finishing a match. Right. But let's go ahead and look at the board. And it looks like Nikolic has a Teferi. Uh, I don't know if these dice are something, if these are secure the waste tokens, or what's going on with those? They're numbers. They are numbers. We'll, get a, we'll confirm on that. All there right. we go. These are secure the waste tokens. So we have an Elspeth versus Teferi situation. Both players with a lot of lands. We have Michael McKenna at 8 and Ben Nicklich at 17. And looks like Teferi just now attacked down to 1. So, top of the deck, back to McKenna will go. He will draw off his Teferi. At least 2 lands in hand. No colonnades on his side. I don't see any colonnades on the other side either. A lot of Field of Ruins in the graveyard, so that would make sense. <laughs> yeah, the card actually relatively easy to deal with in the mirror. It is quite good against the other blue decks, though. And here is Search for Kanta from Michael McKenna. Hit by spell snare on Nikolic. So if we keep pace, I feel that the uh, the Elspeth looks like it's going to overpower the Teferi. Is that right? Yeah, McKenna really wants to have some kind of removal spell to clear one of these blockers to actually connect with the Elspeth. Yeah, currently the three blockers against eight tokens. That means only five comes across. Elspeth makes three more. Right. Elspeth makes three more. Yeah, I think that Ben wins the pacing on this. Mm -hmm.
Either player having an uncontested cryptic command changes the math pretty dramatically. Yeah, that'd be a great draw either side. We see a sw swing of six soldiers. Three of them trade, Elspeth down to three. Yeah, there's also just that tension where both players also just really want to block for their Planeswalker, or they want yeah. to attack down the other. Yeah, this is really interesting. Two soldiers swing at Teferi Bowden. They trade with two of Michael's soldiers. And in the Secure the Waste versus Elspeth, the thing is that Elspeth just keeps making soldiers, so now we see them at even numbers. Right, yeah, McKenna made a lot of soldiers, but Elspeth does not stop. I guess Teferi can draw a card here, and then Michael has worked his way up to a minus three. I believe that the draw step and the Teferi activation for McKenna were both electrolyzed, and that's huge. Okay, well, that's definitely a, that's a game changer. So first electrolyze will shoot down two tokens. He can actually just get rid of the Elspeth this turn. Yep. First one clears two blockers. Other one clears the last one. One point at Elspeth. You have three yeah. attackers left over. That knocks it all out. That's what he's going to do. One and one a second time. Can Nicklich respond? He's going to have to. And he did have a cryptic command here, so he's going to counter draw on that second wow, electrolyze. Wow, and it's good. Yeah, it's good, but that's still, Ryan, what a huge thing that in this matchup that your cryptic had to be spent on an electrolyze. That's not a great feeling. I disagree. Okay. I think that the fact that that resolved is amazing for Nicholas. He was about to lose his Elspeth. He just gets to maintain that now. Yeah, he does. Well, he's going to, they can trade away. If Michael is willing to sacrifice his Teferi, then he can minus three it to send both Planeswalkers away. Mm-hmm. But that's a, that's a much bigger cost. Right. Three more soldiers back over to McKenna. McKenna's hand is really heavy on lands. That would explain why the Cryptic Command resolved. Sure. And Teferi, he's going to have to make the call here. Yeah, minus three. Tuck away the Elspeth. And thanks to Field of Ruin, he can force Nicholas to shuffle it away as well. Right. Yeah, that's the, you don't get to choose if you shuffle or not. You cannot find a land. That's fine. But you will have to shuffle. Right now, Elspeth, two cards down. Nick would love to find it again. Here's Search for Ascanta. And you mentioned Nick McKenna's hands almost all lands. I think it just is four lands. Yikes. And there's a lot of... Now I don't know if I'm McKenna. If I, I don't know that I can Field of Ruin to make him shuffle because I need Field of Ruin for that Ascanta. Yeah. Soldier tokens continue to trade. And yeah, McKenna's life total, he's, he's kind of in dire straits on that front. He's down to seven. Yeah. Two minutes remaining. Mention Nikolic. Remember, he doesn't even need to win this game. He just needs to not lose. And that's looking like a strong spot for him. Yeah, he's looking close to a win. It's going to take a lot for McKenna to come back from this and certainly to do it in time. So he needs to make him shuffle. So Field of Ruin will be used on a dual land. It looks like a hollowed fountain. Both players shuffled. Now Elspeth shuffled away for Nick Nikolic. It's like neither player grabbing a land. Now we're well past that point. <laughs> Blue card from McKenna. Just a pass. Now Ben gets to transform the search. Yeah, Ben's Scalding Tarn, and now he has his Canta the Sunken Rune. Things looking good for Ben Nikolic. That Ascanta will find the Elspeth again. Their decks are only around 20 or so cards, mm -hmm. and Ascanta can find Planeswalkers. Yeah, it won't, won't take too long either. Yeah, shows Electrolyze. Ooh, and with McKenna at 7, yeah. the Electrolyze is a lot of pressure. It's looking nice, and it's tack. And how about Jace the Mind Sculptor? Hmm. Jace as Kanta combo. Sure. That's just resetting your brainstorms every turn. I don't mind that. It's a lot extra cards. And McKenna will extend the hand. So, team control, Purcell, Nikolic, and Rossum do get the win.